And what the Hizmet movement and its people do is it shares and teaches the world, I think, a much truer image and wisdom about what Islam has to offer the world. About Mr. Gulen and the people who choose to share his teaching. So that leads to the last part. My name is Stephen Booth Nadav. I am a rabbi for over 20 years. I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. And though I don't know the story, my grandmother used to tell me about her grandfather, who was known as the Turk, who came from Turkey, but I don't know much about his actual story. Uh, I live here in Denver, Colorado, and I am the chaplain at a place called Kavod Senior Life. Um, used to be called Allied Jewish Apartments. It's a senior apartment complex here in, in Denver. And I also am the director of a small project called Wisdom House Denver, which is a center for multi-faith engagement and spiritual inquiry. My knowledge of the Hizmet or the Gulen movement comes from my experience of the members of that movement here in Colorado. Um, some years ago when I was a congregational rabbi, a few members of local leaders of the movement came to, to meet and talk with me, and, and we've been in relationship ever since. Um, my impression is that it is one of really only two major Muslim movements that I know of in the world um, that are very clear and adamant from the beginning that interfaith dialogue is essential for Muslims. Uh, and it's and it's it's a wonder to me. It's a wonderful um, it's a wonderful thing. It makes a real difference in the world when um, when we get to learn more about Islam through people who say yes, we want to get to know you and we want you to know us. I only know about Mr. Gulen through again the people who teach his teachings, who share his teachings, who act in the world according to his teachings, and through the articles and, that I have read uh, uh, that he wrote both online and that have been given to me on paper. He advocates and teaches in every way possible the importance of education and the importance of interfaith dialogue. From my experience, it seems that what he's teaching is that to be a Muslim obviously means to be a servant of God, to be a good person, and to share that in the world. Don't hide it, um, that, that you need to share that, that that's an important part of what it means. Right now, I have to say that it's, it seems to me that you could say that of all religions in the world right now, Islam is probably the most misunderstood for all sorts of reasons, for the way it's treated in the press, for the way that certain people act in the world in the name, and that they claim in the name of Islam. And by the way, people do the same kinds of things in the name of all religious movements. Um, so one, for me, one of the greatest contributions of, of Mr. Gulen and the Hizmet movement in the world is that, is that you stand up in the world and you say, this is what it means to be a Muslim. And when people are doing bad things, you stand up and say, no, that is not what it means to be a Muslim. And we in the United States, we, I think maybe here as much as anywhere, get these distorted images of Islam through the press and so on. And what the Hizmet movement and its people do is it shares and teaches the world, I think, a much truer image and wisdom about what Islam has to offer the world. So for, so for me, that's the most important thing that Islam, that, that the Hizmet movement has to offer, which is to lift up in the world what, what Islam, what Muslims really are, as opposed to the distorted images we might get elsewhere. In my experience, the Hizmet movement represents Islam as both an ancient and a modern religion, a religion that goes into its oldest and deepest teachings and holds those up into the world for how a Muslim acts in the world and what does Islam teach about life. And yet it's very modern. 
Um, it's, it's, it's people who uh, live in today's world, who work in can, you know, any place in the United States anyway, it seems. Somebody from this movement could be working, could be involved in that. Um, they're very contemporary people rooted in ancient tradition. The Hizmet movement is dedicated more than any other Muslim group, group that I'm aware of to interfaith dialogue. And then, why, then you might ask, well, so what? Why is that important? My understanding from reading Mr. Gulen, number one, is that it's important for Islam and it's important for Muslims. That to know yourself, you have to know others. And that that's critical. Um, but what I also see, what difference it makes in the world, is that when I'm sitting here in the United States, reading and hearing only the, you know, the, the worst of humans twisting what Islam is in the world, I have, I have another model. Most people that I know, you know, just general people out there in the United States, when they read bad things that Muslims might be doing in the world or things said in the name of Islam, they just think that that's what Islam's about. They don't know. So for me, it's incredibly important that this movement holds up an Islam, as, um, as I've said, that is both ancient and new, um, that's open to the world, that's open to others, um, and that stands for ethical, godly ways of being in the world. I think that interfaith dialogue, perhaps now, especially now, is critical to dealing with the problems we have in society. So many of the problems we have in society are caused either because they're being dealt with on a level that's just not solving, it just seems the conflict just continues, or they're caused by people not knowing each other. So there's a lot of fear of the other, there's a lot of fear of the unknown, and, and frankly, over history, religions haven't helped with that a whole lot. Religions have actually, um, in most cases, probably in all cases, um, have contributed to a sense of us versus them. But I see in the world rising today, and the Hizmet movement is part of this, of an understanding that in order for the world to survive, we have to understand that it's all about God. That when you get down to what's really important, it's about God. And the God that I worship and the God that you worship is the same God. So once we get that, that really we're both on the same side, now let's deal with the problems in the world. If we, if we start to deal with the problems in the world of I'm here and you're there, um, these days it's leading to a lot of bad things. Everything from, from political issues to environmental issues. Uh, I think that really there's no problem in the world right now that couldn't be better addressed by people having experience of knowing people different from them. And religion is one, I think, very important way. Another thing related to that is that I think religions, all religions, have wisdom to offer us today. How are we supposed to treat our planet? Well, most religious traditions talk about how should we be treating God's creation. We have huge environmental problems. We will not have a planet to live on if we don't address those. And frankly, I think religions offer um, wisdom for that. And when I hear a faith other than my own speaking on that issue, for example, um, I think, oh, that's really, that's very compelling. Well, what about, what does my tradition have to offer? Oh, my tradition also offers something compelling. And then we start getting together with people. So I would say that interfaith dialogue is critical because it's the only way to solve our problems in the world today is by people coming together across all boundaries of difference. I wish I had more experience of the Hizmet movement in terms of the, its schools. Um, so I don't believe there's one in this area, so I don't really have practical direct experience. But from what I've read and what I've, from what I've heard about from people, I'm very impressed that, again, a religious movement is willing to say one of the most important things in the world today, in addition to interfaith dialogue, is education. And they're not saying just religious education, they're just saying, they're saying education. That, that it's good for Islam, it's good for Muslims, it's good for the world if we have more people who, ha who, who are educated, who have a high level of competency to work in the world. And then you add to that the wisdom of Islam for how to be in the world, I think you have something very powerful. And from what I understand, in many places in the world, the best schools in those areas are the Hizmet schools. So people want to send their kids there. You know, when I was growing up as a Jewish boy in Chicago, 
And uh, there would be different social issues that I would hear about, poverty, homelessness, hunger. The organizations that, I, that were working on those issues, the majority of them that I saw were Christian organizations. So I saw Christians doing good work in the world. That's good. But I was wondering, well, where's the Jewish organizations doing? I'm Jewish. I think, you know, I also want to support Jewish organizations doing good work in the world. Today, there are many more Jewish, there are many Jewish organizations doing work on any issue you can imagine. Um, so things have changed a lot um, in the last 50 years. Um, so my guess is the world doesn't see as many Muslim groups fighting poverty and dealing with these kinds of social issues. And the Hizmet movement doing that, again, is a good thing. It, first of all, it makes the, it, it's part of that, as different faith traditions come together to address the problems of the world, we'll have more success dealing with those problems. It gives an opportunity for Muslims to say, I want to make a difference, you know, certainly in the, in the United States, Muslims are a minority group in the United States, just like Jews are. And I'm sure Muslims in the United States want to say, I want to address poverty too, and I don't want to just address poverty in my Muslim community. I want to have an impact broader. I want the world to see Muslims doing good work in the world. So that leads to the last part, which is that a Muslim organization doing good works in the world beyond the Muslim community is a wonderful antidote and a much needed antidote to the distortions of Islam in the world today. I would like to say thank God that Mr. Gulen and his students have come to the United States. It has enriched our country already. It will continue to enrich our country. You have helped open dialogue and interfaith relationships in this country in a way that, that already has made a difference here. You have brought, um, I, I forgot to mention, but you have brought members of our local community of all faith traditions to Turkey to see Islam um, in a, in a, where it's a majority culture and to see how that functions and again to have a real view of that. Um, it's just thank God for everything that, that uh, this movement has done in this country and I, I wish it all the best. It's a movement that emphasizes service over um, any kind of proselytizing efforts. Uh, Islam is the heart of the Hizmet movement. It is a grassroots movement. Uh, it is uh, focusing on interreligious relationships. What I liked about it is that it promotes interfaith, but not just interfaith, interethnic cooperation, interreligious cooperation, as well as interinstitutional within Rochester.